Hello and welcome to Crucible of Words for more dedicated legacy action. Today for our midweek meta deck spot, we are playing Eron Relentless's Legacy Challenge winning Elves deck. Now this is a little bit different to the other Elves decks that I've played on the channel before, because we have Elvish Reclaimer as one of our one drops here. This just gives the deck a different angle of attack. It also means you can get things like Bajooka Bog into your deck, so have a little bit of Graveyard Hate for the decks that might be able to race you, as well as being able to guarantee finding a Cradle, which is obviously an incredibly powerful card. Also in this list, we've got a few interesting one-offs, but we'll get to that in a second. I'll just go over how the deck basically works. So we have a bunch of elves in the form of like Heritage Druid, and obviously our average Reclaimer, but we've got Birchall Rangers, Allosaurus Shepherds, Things like that, and we're going to be using these to generate mana alongside other elves and elvish visionary, which we can rebounce over and over again with Wyward Symbia every turn, drawing more cards till we find the business spells that kill our opponent. Those business spells are generally speaking natural order, which goes and finds Crater Hoof to make a massive guy. But if we're kind of behind and only have one guy, we can go and get a Traxer, which can kind of refill our hand a little bit, but it's more about the body on this one rather than the. Uh, drawing because we're we, a lot of our things are creatures, but we can we're probably going to get about three cards off of this on average, I would say, which is fine. Like, I've, I'm a big fan of Torsten in Elves, but the body for this one is what we're playing today. And obviously, Aaron Relentless is a very well known Elves player, and they're much better at the deck than I am. So we'll see how this goes. We've also got some glue, so we've got less Elves than you'd normally expect. But we've got more glue to hold it together. So we've got some Once Upon a Times and Green Sun Zenith. So we're using these to dig into our deck, find the things we need. So we've sort of going for quality over quantity in terms of elves. This deck also has Glimpse of Nature. Now we're not going to have the really big Nettle Sentinel type plays with Glimpse of Nature where you draw like a whole bunch. These are sort of going to be drawing us a few cards for sure. You know, they're going to be one mana Ancestrals most of the time, which is fine. You know, it's great in fact, but we're not going to be able to just draw like most of our deck in one turn. I wouldn't imagine, but it's certainly possible. But we don't have like untaps from the Nettle Sentinels, which is normally how you sort of get that really going. Other than that, we've got a few sing silver bullets in the main deck. So we've got the Collector Roof, the Endurance, and the Grist. These can all be found with Green Sun Zenith, as well as Natural Order if need be. Endurance for Graveyard Hate, Collector Roof for all our Storm decks, so we can shut down their Artifact Mana. Also very good against 8 Cast and Painter. And Grist is just sort of our way of removing a thing that gets on the board. We can't remove creatures other than Grist in the main deck, so that's what that's there for. That's pretty much it for the main deck. Uh, we've got a couple of Besages in there, it's probably worth talking about. So this gives us an answer to blow up some other problem permanents, things like Ensnaring Bridge or whatever. And let's have a quick chat about the sideboard. So we've got four discard spells. There will be decks that can just go sort of underneath what we're doing, and we need to be able to disrupt them. We've got a little bit of Graveyard Hate, so we've got two Fairy Macabre, as well as this these three Endurances. So Endurances are also very good against sort of Delver style decks because you can just strip out a thing and we can play a very strong fair game against them with these. We have a Reclamation Sage is one of our ways of blowing things up. We can also tutor with the Green Sun Zeniths. We have one Guy's Blessing, which is for the Painter matchup. It's one Cyborg card and it basically means that they can't combo you out. So they need the third card like a Soul Guide Lantern in order to beat you, which is quite nice and should hopefully buy us enough time and we don't have to draw it, it just has to be in our deck. We have two snuff outs because sometimes we're going to have to remove things. Caracas, we can go and find this with our Ogre Reclaimer and it helps remove certain problem permanents in play that might be some massive creatures that are going to ruin our day. So things like Emrakul, Opposing Attractors, etc. And then we've got one more Grist in case we need to blow more stuff up. Alternatively, if we're worried that our elves might not be long for the world, we can board into sort of a slightly bigger mid-range plan if we're expecting like many Plague Engineers from the other side of the battlefield. So against Mono Black, I think we're probably going to be boarding in uh, these chunkier bodies here, so we've got stuff to work around Plague Engineers. That's roughly what this deck does and how we do it. So we're going to make some elves, we're going to make some mana, we're going to make some giant beast. And that's pretty much it. I've played elves a few times on my channel, you can go back and have a look at them. I've historically done pretty well with elves when I've played it, even though I'm not really an elves player and I've only played it a handful of times. Alright, let's jump into a league with Elm Relentless's Legacy Challenge winning elves list. We're on the play for round one. And we've got a Reclaimer we can throw out off of a basic forest, unless we want to go and use this to find a Dried Arbor. So we'll have to make that decision. But we have a Once Upon a Time that can dig us a little bit and inform that decision. So this seems like a pretty good keep. We're going to need a little bit more action. 
but I think we're in an okay spot here. The Reclaimer can do a fair chunk of work here. So I think we cast this first and see what we're working with. Uh, Birch Law. Quite like Birch Law. So I think we can get the Birch Law here and then get a selection of elves that will get us going with a Cradle. Yeah, sure, we'll take the Birch Laws here. And I think we do just want to get a Forest here. I think we'll play out the Allosaurus Shepherd because it's the uncounted one and just in case it's a force of will on the other side of the battlefield. We may as well play around. It means we don't get our Elvish Reclaimer to activate until the, a slightly later turn. But we can play out our hand next turn relatively easily. We have a Paducah Bog in case our opponent's graveyard is a thing we need to tackle. A Bayou. A Lion's Eye Diamond. So this looks like some sort of Storm deck. Probably Ad Nauseam Tendrils, I would guess. Wish Claw Talisman. Okay. Are they going right now? They can put an Ad Nauseam on the stack, which probably beats us. So we're pretty much just F6'd here. Yeah, so they're going to pop the Wish Claw Talisman. Go get an Ad Nauseam. Yeah, they've already got Storm 6, so it's pretty rudimentary to win from here. Um, they do need another Tutor here. Burning Wish, that should do it, right? Lotus Petal for starting red or the Chrome Mox. Yeah, so they're going to... Yeah, they're going through this pretty quickly. This is not their first rodeo, I would imagine. So they're Burning Wish here, show us the Tendrils, and this will hit us for a bunch of damage. All right, uh, I imagine this matchup is pretty horrible for us. So I would like these Thought Seizers. And that's about all we've got going for us, I'm afraid. The Grist probably goes here. Paducah Bog sometimes has text, but not very often. They looked more on this sort of the Epic Storm, but they're playing green instead of white, which I believe Brian Cook was doing the other day in a video of his. So... We probably don't have time to be doing like Elvish Visionary Bounce Chains. We just kind of need to get our opponents dead. The Allosaurus Shepherd is an interesting one because it does provide us with an ability to pump our guys and go large. Uh, maybe we're trimming a Symbiote. Trimming a Once Upon a Time. Trimming a Visionary. Maybe that's wrong. I'm just trimming a little bit here. Uh, is it, how useful in Endurance, actually? Would I rather have... Once upon a time, uh, rather another visionary, I think, and an endurance. I don't think if endurance is going to be relevant, it's very unlikely that it is relevant. Um, or would I rather have a Paducah Bog or an endurance here? Probably rather have an endurance than a Paducah Bog, so at least it attacks. Sure, we'll try this. I imagine this matchup is pretty bad because they're one of the decks that goes underneath us quite effectively. Uh, okay, we got Thoughtseize into some other stuff. We can keep this. We're relatively close to turn 2 natural order. If we can find another elf, we can do a turn 2 natural order. After a turn 1 thought seize. No, it's not turn 2, is it? It's turn 3 still. Uh, because we do have to just go and get ourselves a bayou here. They're not going to mess with our lands because of the deck they are, so we may as well just get the bayou. Thought seize our opponent who already mulligans, so that's not a bad situation for us. Dark Ritual, Galvanic Relay. So they got one payoff here, so I think we hit the payoff... We are going to get hit with a Thoughtseize, but our opponent can't actually put a Storm Spell on the stack. All right, so this is going to go, and then we're almost certainly getting Thoughtseize unless they've drawn another Relay. In which case, we get Thoughtseize and Relay. Sure. Yep, it's in the natural order. Makes sense. What we got here? Another Thoughtseize. Interesting. So I think our opponent's going to be able to go off next turn. I think this is the turn where we play two elves out and get some damage on the board and then actually we can do both I suppose can't we because we can play this and this and then use it to thought seize our opponent. We're not really going anywhere from this point onwards though. So thought seize our opponent here. Okay so they found a tutor so that's another thing that I'm pretty happy to strip from our opponent's hand. Excellent. So, we do need some business here. Mishra's Bauble. So this is a redraw from our opponent, but we have perfect information still. Until they get this redraw. Okay, so we'll play this one out because this gets a dried arbor, which does attack. Every life point we can hit off our opponent makes their ad nauseum worse. Which is our plan here. Shut off one of their lines that is a route to victory. Okay. So there's a Lotus Petal. Are we going here? 
Dark Ritual. Feels like we're going. A right Flame. Okay. Which one is it? A Burning Wish with four mana up. And empty the Warrens. Sure. Which is quite for a Dried Island now. Natural Order is a very good draw for us here. My opponent is very much ahead right now. Elvish Reclaimer. So this can block and do stuff. I think this is fine. We might as well play out our Bayou. Just to have more mana available for when the time comes. And then we pass. So we block four and then they have six left. So we take six. Uh, how many elves do we want to lose is the question. Like Reclaimer is a free block. There's a one, two. So we get a block. So we're definitely blocking one. We're definitely blocking another one. So this is eight. I think we do have to block them all here, right? Uh, one, two, three. So we take seven here and then next turn. Yeah, we can just take this actually. And this get, leaves us with a green creature that can tap for natural order if we draw it. That seems fine. Because we can block this one and only take six the following turn. Okay, thought see. This is a very bad draw for us. We need to find something good. We can't afford to cast this. We have to block one and one here. Then we do this. We sacrifice this one. To go and get ourselves another Dried Arbor. Because we want to be able to have the mana to cast the Natural Order next turn. If we sack one of the other ones, we won't have the mana. Wish for Talisman. Sure. So we need to hit Natural Order right now. And that might still not be good enough. Allosaurus Shepherd. So they got six guys. We can block three. And then we take three and die. Yep, they've got us. I think I would almost always like to be on the storm side of this equation because we're just making some little guys. They can just do their thing and go underneath us. Yeah, a bit of a sour start to the league, but I think this matchup is pretty heavily favoured in, in, in terms of the opponent's deck. Now, we could have like, tried to mulligan for a Green Sun Zenith into collect through type thing, but as we saw, our opponent just thought so, so that wouldn't have been a good mulligan anyway. So let's go on to round two. Well, this seems like a pretty good hand. I don't really like the Atraxa here, unfortunately. That's the one thing that I'm not a big fan of. But we have a redraw and we have a way of digging. So I think this is a keep. A Noble Hierarch. So this could be anything from Infect to Bant Natural Order. So we've unfortunately drawn another once upon a time. So we only get one of these for free. Um... A Cradle seems like a pretty good one. I will take a Cradle. This means that I'm incentivized to get a basic forest here, so we can get Wastelanded. Put out this Reclaimer. This can check a Noble Hierarch if it's going to attack. And it has an activated ability, so it's better to get this in play just in case we do want to activate the ability and need to for some reason. If our opponent's on like the control -y end of things, I think they're in a good shape. Ooh, Black Mana. Interesting. Grist Hunger Tide. Are we going to lose our Reclaimer here? Or are they just going to make a 1-1? One -one? They're just going to make a 1-1. One -one. So next turn they're going to start trying to kill our stuff. Understood opponent. A Windswept Teeth. So we can play a Heritage Druid, then a Visionary, and do some stuff this way. Okay. This should be a reasonably interesting turn. Let's play out this. this. We play out our Cradle here. Tap for 2. Make this Visionary. This will draw us a card. And then we'll be able to get three mana here. Uh, is it worth doing the three mana now? If it gives us an elf to deploy, I guess that's probably worth doing. Let's cast this. Once upon a time, have you got anything good? An Allosaurus Shepherd. That's a pretty good elf to deploy right now. This one pretty much has to get an answer from our opponent. So they have to down tick their Grist this turn to kill this, I believe. It's going to be very hard for us to front side this. There's no way we can... We're just trying to get this in via the back door usually with Zenith or Natural Order. Whereas if this was something like an Apex Altasaur, one, two, three, four. So you have four, eight. Yeah, we could easily cast this if it was something like an Apex Altasaur, which has a pretty powerful effect on the board. We'd be able to like kill all that guys, but such is life sometimes. The 7-7 the seven, seven lifelink flying vigilance body is... Nothing to ignore here. All right, so our opponent's got a knight. They've got a collector roof. 
They've got one green mana in their pool. They haven't activated their grist yet, so... Okay, they're sacrificing a guy. Presumably this insect. Sure. Going to be destroying our Alasaur Shepherd, I imagine, because that this gives us the ability to attack uh, for 20 next turn if they don't kill this. Yep, there it goes. That's fine. Well, not fine, but I kind of factor that in as a thing that happens. An Elvish Reclaimer. We don't really have any spicy lands we can go and find here to do anything. I kind of just don't really have a hand that goes anywhere right now. We can play out this Windswept Heath, which gets us a Dried Arbor, and we can play out this Elvish Reclaimer. But we can't put two lands in the graveyard right now. Uh, well, we can't attack and put two lands in the graveyard, but we can block and put two lands in the graveyard. So I guess that's what we're doing here. So we can go and get another Dryad Arbor. Just maximise our ability to Cradle. But our opponent has an active Knight now, so they've got something like a Tabernacle. They can just tap down our Cradle with it, or if they've got Wasteland, they can attack our Cradle as well. Okay, at least they didn't play half of the Dark Depths combo. I would say our opponent is considerably favoured now, but we have a bunch of draws that just win us the game. Okay, who are they targeting with this? This Elvish Reclaimer in particular. Okay. Response, we're going to lose our forest and get a Dried Arbor here. So that Grist is cleared off the board at least. We can crack this and make this guy into a 3-4. Then they wanted to tap this before they activated their Grist. Because they got one less mana out of it now. They have an additional Grist. Okay. Is this going to kill one of our guys by getting rid of the Collector Roof? Sort of like a sort of Maverick-y type pile is what this looks like to me. Okay, they're going down again. So probably losing our average Reclaimer here. Since they target the, the last one, they'll probably target this one. Sure. No amount of additional Dried Arbors is going to change that. Okay. What are they finding here? A Wasteland. You can take out a Cradle. We do have another Cradle, so it's not the end of the world for us. So they're probably going to take two from this oof, unless they want to... I guess they want to hold this back and block that for their grist, actually, don't they? All right. Let's just go and get ourselves another Dried Arbor. And draw a Natural Order or a Green Sun Zenith or something good. Another Windswept Teeth. That doesn't really do it for us. Uh, I think we just play out Bayou here. So we can kill the grist if we want to. We'll lose a guy for it. Uh, I think we'll attack grist with these. Is it these two? I think it's these two. So we're trading a dried arbor for the backside of a grist because it's already got some value. Not great, but our opponent's got one card in hand. So if we can rip better than them, we're okay. If they play a tabernacle, or they can go fish out a tabernacle, we're in a bit of trouble. Fiend Artisan. I don't think their deck's going to have a tabernacle. These sort of Newton Elves, as they're called, usually the sort of Mavericky Fiend Artisan type decks, they tend not to have tabernacle as a general rule because they want to deploy quite a lot of creatures themselves. Obviously, Guy's Cradle is a pretty good way of paying for your tabernacle triggers. So it's certainly something they could have. All right, so we're sacrificing Scrubland here. This might just be so they get more mana. Okay, so it's a Wasteland. This is going to hit our Bayou or our Dried Arbor. I think this is a close call. I think it's probably the Dried Arbor you hit here. Yeah. So they got a lot more power than us. They got way more power than us. But we can draw a natural order. We can't put an attractor into play though. So that's not going to be doing a lot for us. If we can find ourselves a Wildwood Symbiote, we can start bouncing and getting our stuff together. Like we can block, bounce, and then just sort of have a little card engine going. A glimpse of nature. That doesn't do anything here, does it? How much damage is this? This is 16, 17, 18. So we're going to have to start chump blocking. Yeah, I think we've lost this one. Horizon Canopy. I don't think that's really necessary. I think they just attack with both of their guys. I think we're more incentivized to block with our Heritage Druid than anything else here. Because this one, at least, we can bounce and get some redraws. Now, the Heritage Druid does mean that we can have more mana if we get glimpse going, but... I'm not sure that's the thing we're going to do. We don't have the ability to use Nettle Sentinels and stuff in this particular build. Another glimpse. Yeah, we're just dead here. Sure. So our deck didn't do anything. Bit awkward. So what is going to be useful here? I think Snuff Out 
and endurances look like they're going to have some text here and grist looks like it might be quite useful because we're going to be wanting to kill their things the tracks might be a little bit difficult for them to answer but they do have a caracas which means they can just bounce this but we would have got the value anyway so maybe that's worth doing so boarding in these sorts of things maybe we're looking at uh, we don't need a collect roof. That's one of our bullets that we're not really in the mood for. Bought out some of these. The glimpses haven't been filling me with a great amount of joy so far. But Pajukabog is good. The Besaidu definitely has text. So we're looking at cutting two of these cards. I think we need like the big body here, especially since we might be looking at some pretty scary stuff from the other side of the board creature-wise. If we need to fit two more slots in here, what are they going to be? The uncounterability from Alasaur Shepherd doesn't feel like where we want to be. The Elvish Reclaimer seems fine. He's trimming a visionary. Or are we trimming a glimpse? Maybe it's a glimpse. I don't know. The glimpses just don't seem that good in this deck to me. I understand, you know, what they can do, obviously, but... Okay, what does this hand do? We make... Turn one, Dried Arbor. We untap. Then what do we do? We play an Elvish Visionary and draw a card. Um, that doesn't feel very good. I think we can do better than this. Like, we have a draw engine and we have a combo thing to do. So I think we do keep this. We'll probably throw back the Arbor here. We can lead out on a basic forest. Now, there is a question as to whether or not we play a guy this turn or we hold up for a glimpse turn. I think we play this out so next turn we can play the Elvish Visionary and bounce it if needs be. If they take their turn one off killing our symbiote, that's a little bit annoying, but they've taken their turn one off to kill our symbiote and not develop their own board with either a Hierarch or a Reclaimer of their own. I imagine they're just going to play a Mana Dork this turn. Or a Reclaimer. Okay, Green Sun Zenith, that's a Mana Dork. So this is going to get them a Dried Arbor. So they're accelerating into an early night. A cradle. Does that change anything here? I don't think it does. Let me play this one out. I don't think we get a bayou here. I think we just get a forest. And we will cast this visionary. Do I want to try and trade here? I don't think I do. I think we just pass a turn and maybe we can try and get a glimpse turn next turn. Or we can do a natural order. Possibly both. Because Birchstall Rangers does provide a decent chunk of mana. But if this is... Um, yeah, I was going to say, if this is a Plague Engineer, we probably just lose. Um, right. And this is probably game over for us, unless we can get a Grist into play. I'm curious to see if they name Insect here. No, they do name Nelf. So at least we have something here. So if we get an additional mana, we can get a Symbiote up and running uh, into a Natural Order. A Dryad Arbor. So what we could do here is we could play Dryad Arbor this turn the next turn so we could do you want to draw a card off the visionary is it worth trying to draw a card off the visionary here i think that's fine it's just a cycle it's not great obviously but i think this card drawer is worth it okay so this is a guy we can actually play but i think we're just gonna play the dried arbor for now so next turn we can go and get a traxer but if our opponent has a caracas then it doesn't really get us anywhere I don't think we're natural ordering for a Grist. We might as well just go big. If they kill our Dried Arbor, we don't get to do that. A Wasteland, sure. So this, they get to kill our Dried Arbor. That sets us back another turn. What we got here? A Round Out Excavator. Okay, so we're just going to get Wastelanded every turn here. Yep, our opponent's deck feels pretty good against what we're trying to accomplish here. A Green Sun Zenith. So... If we play out this Reclaimer, so I, I guess we can glimpse Pain Green and cast this Reclaimer. Get a cycle here. If we want to, we can play the Cradle out, but that will cost us the mana next turn. So if we play the Cradle, we tap for two, we can replay this and play this and draw two more cards. But if our Cradle dies, we don't get to Natural Order. Hmm... Not sure about this one. I don't think we want to play our Cradle out. 
And if we drew a cradle off of the glimpse trigger, then we definitely just jam the cradle there. But we know they've got wastelands coming. But we now have a reclaimer here that can block the plague engineer if they give us the opportunity to. Some scrub land. A lot of mana here. A palace jailer. That's a little bit of an awkward one. Let's see what one this hits. Again, this means we don't get to do our thing. They're targeting the symbiote. I guess we let that happen. They can't attack with a plague engineer right now. They can attack with the Ramanat, but nothing will happen. What are we supposed to do here? If we get a Dryad Arbor, we can then cycle it into another land for next turn. Let's do this. So we get the Dryad Arbor. We kind of need another land to do this, but we have... We play this. That's two, three mana. That's not enough. They are just going to wasteland our Dryad Arbor here. If we play out a Cradle, they're probably going to wasteland the Cradle. We can't quite afford to get the Grist here. We could get another Reclaimer and then start jamming. Sure. Let's tap for some mana here. Green Suns for a Reclaimer. We can't quite attack yet. Like, we are quite far behind this game. Like, Plague Engineer is unsurprisingly very good against Elves. But I think we bricked on land for a few turns too many to get this natural orange play. So that's the Wasteland we know about. They probably have to hit the Cradle here. Pass to Exile. Interesting. I'm actually okay with this. Oh, wait, no. We've got both of our forests. This is terrible for us. Oh, no. When I played this... But last time I played Elves, I had a load more basics in. Oh, uh, yeah. We... I don't know how we're supposed to win this game. Our opponent's absolutely smashing us to pieces here. Just feels like it's going to be pretty bad for us. Are they going to name Forest? Or Dryad or whatever? Yeah, they named Dryad. Okay. They're just also drawing extra cards every turn. And we can't do anything about it. A Wooded Foothills. This is a pretty reasonable draw. So if we can get a Traxxer into play, then we might be okay. But they might just have a removal spell for it, and then we just don't get to go anywhere. If we ran another forest on our deck, we could have natural ordered this turn. There's a wasteland. They're going to plow our guy. Are we able to do anything here? Or we could try and turn this into a bayou to make our opponent wasteland it, and then Paducah bog their wasteland, but I don't think that's going to work. I think we just have to let this go and start taking damage. Our opponent is just absolutely making a clown of us right now. Their deck feels significantly better in this matchup for what they're doing. Multiple Plague Engineers is just backbreaking, especially when we don't have any realistic way of removing it. I think last time I played Elves, I mentioned how bad Engineer is and why things like this member might be worth playing because of it. All right, so we have three cards we can't cast, and we're going to take... Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we're dead on board, so we just got absolutely smushed for a second round in a row. Certainly not the start I was hoping for with the deck, but let's go into the third round and see if we can turn around and get a positive record. All right, we're on the play. We're going to get to draw a lot of cards. I guess we keep this one. And I'm finding, like, how to play this particular build of Elves a little bit difficult compared to what I'm used to. I know there's not huge amounts of differences, but the other elf build is just basically just full of one drops, the one I'm used to. So you spam a load of one drops, your glimpses are just generally a lot more powerful because you have more one drops and you kind of do your own thing. Whereas this one, we've sort of got stuff a little bit further up the curve. Okay. And that Reclaimer is a, an interesting one to me. Okay, so I have a Cradle here. Can't really do anything with Cradle right now. I think we're just gonna go and get ourselves a forest here. Cast a cheeky Elvish Visionary. And next turn we're hoping to have a big turn. Attack our opponent. We might be dead next turn if our opponent is on the old Doomsday. We might have to win next turn. So we'll see how this goes. What we really need is a Heritage Druid. That's how we can leverage this glimpse for a lot of value. They're cracking a Scalding Tarn. They've got another Underground Sea, so this definitely feels like Doomsday. Casting a Ponder means that they probably don't have the Doomsday Dark Ritual line sewn up immediately. 
Right, and then the passing. So, we've got some choices here. We can start off with a glimpse and see how we go. Or we can just leverage this why would symbiote plan. I don't hate that as a strategy. Let's play an Elvish Visionary. Alright, let's get another card. A Birch Lord Rangers is actually a pretty big one for us. We play out the Cradle here. So we can pay... We can get three mana here. Cast Glimpse, cast Birch Lore, make some mana. I think this is what we're in the mood to do here. Let's cast this Glimpse. This might get a counter spell. A Brainstorm, show our opponents dig in. Let's go for a Birch Lore Rangers. Let's tap these for a Wildwood Symbiote. A second Glimpse. I don't think we're in a position to cast this second Glimpse though. Uh, let's tap two green here. So this gives us another green mana. Then we can cast this. I think our plan is looking like trying to win next turn here. Yes, okay. We have a win next turn. Natural order. We can not do anything here. We can tap one mana, but that doesn't get us anywhere. So we need our opponent to not kill us on the next turn. So we have exactly enough to cast a crater hoof next turn with all of our guys, but we can tap some more mana to do some other stuff. Okay, so our opponent was just digging presumably for a doomsday that they never found. So yeah, okay, so that was what, a turn four kill I think for us. Doomsday is gonna be a deck where we're gonna want these thought seizers. I'm trying to think what else it, this like mono underground sea deck could be. I don't think it's realistic gonna be something else. The endurance is an interesting one. Endurance is an interesting one because we can mess with their pile, which is not nothing. I don't think Grist is going to be good enough to do anything here. These once upon a times get worse if we're boarding in a load of Thought Seizers. We want to keep our creature count dense. Uh, let's take these out for now. So this is the straight up cut that we have here. If we want to get Endurances in, it'll cost us more. So we can probably get rid of an Oof for another Endurance. I don't think there's anything else we want to cut here. We want to keep our engine... A little bit of Atraxa digs us into potentially a Thought Seize and interaction with our opponents, so I think it's worth keeping the Atraxa in. So we'll submit. Okay, we can't cast any of our spells with this hand, so it's going to be shipping it away. This hand doesn't do anything, it's very slow. This hand does stuff, I guess, but it's got some issues with it. So, do we keep this in case we draw a black card? We can... Green Sun Zenith for the Birch Law Rangers, which means maybe we get rid of a Heritage Druid. We can always go and find one later, but we go, we lead out on Shepherd, turn to Green Sun Zenith for Birch Law Rangers, thought he's our opponent. Um, that means we still have to get rid of another card, doesn't it? So I guess we just get rid of this. It's not great from our perspective, but we're going to draw a couple of cards before we get to crunch time. A Wirewood Symbiote. I think we are just playing out our Uncounterable guy. This means that we can get our Birchall Ranger next turn without issue. Our opponent may be running a Daze, but if they bounce a land, that's probably going to be a turn off. Okay, so our Birchall Ranger line is no longer a viable one. So that's a bit annoying. A Windswept Heath here. So I think we play this out to go and get a Bayou. So we don't need to use this now. Right, let's see if we can thoughts is our opponent and see if I'm right about them being a doomsday deck. Bedlam Reveler, what does this do? This is oh okay, I remember this one. So this is kind of each instant or sorcery in your ground. So there's not really much in the way of instants or sorceries here. We'll just take the shouldered. Because that kind of ruins our best lines. And it's the only thing that they can realistically cast any sort of time. Okay, I unless our opponent's transformed away from Doomsday. Uh, this doesn't look like it was a doomsday at all. So, interesting to note. So this turn we can get a two drop. And there's one very good two drop that we can find here. Which is Elvish Visionary. Which can kind of help us pull out of the, of the sort of spot we're in now. If they've drawn a blue card that would be annoying, but they didn't. So we get a Visionary. Okay, another Thought Seize. I'm down with that. Do I think our opponent's going to have anything flashy here? They could have like a Snapcaster. That'd be pretty bad for us, but it'd be pretty bad for us regardless. Okay. So next time we can Thought Seize and then replay the Visionary. 
We can probably replay the visionary twice if we want to. Let's see, so there's a bloodstain mire. And a plague engineer. Okay, let's bounce this so we at least get the This is always gonna name Elf. Well, not always, but quite often is gonna be naming Elf. Sure. So now we need to find a Grist or something. But we've boarded out the Grist because we thought our opponent was on Doomsday. So things get a little trickier from here. Uh, I think we will thought suit our opponent and see what they got. A Bedlam Reveler and a Forcible. I guess we take the Bedlam Reveler because that's like some action at least. I think we are just cantripping here with this elf. Uh, Alasaurus Shepherd, that doesn't help us out much either. I don't think our opponent's going to have access to... I guess it doesn't matter if we play this Cradle out. Uh, they're more likely to make us discard cards. This feels like a mana base that can cast him to Turek more than Wasteland. So I'm going to play this out. And then we're going to pass. So we don't have the Grists in now. So we're on the can we play an Atraxa off of a Natural Order. Bloodstain Maya. So they have a high cast force of will up now. But we have the thoughts to take that if it becomes a thing we care about. A Green Sun Zenith. Okay, so we can thoughts with our opponent first. We don't have enough lands in our graveyard to do anything really cool here. We just take this, leave them with the trop. So we can green suns for two. What does that do? Not a lot. The next turn we can green sun for a an endurance. That feels like a better play. If we draw an endurance, we might be able to catch out this play engine in combat. Our opponent's definitely using their graveyard because we've seen the Bedlam Reveler. So getting endurance here will give us supremacy on the board, as well as uh, getting rid of any resources they can have from their graveyard. A fatal push on this guy. Ah, that's pretty annoying. An elvish reclaimer. So this doesn't die to their plague engineer, which is something. And it means that we've got the endurance next turn now. Uh, so opponent is actually on a Grixis control deck. I don't think this is a doomsday deck. I just made a guess based well i made an educated guess based on the information we had in game one all right so that's our thing. okay so this is okay if we get a dried arbor this works as well so i think we probably just get the dried arbor here and then we tap this and hope they haven't drawn a counter spell okay they did not so this is the endurance here there's nothing else that really works for us We'll shuffle the graveyard. Well, it doesn't shuffle it in. It puts it on the bottom of their library. And then we have a blocker for the Plague Engineer. So we've, we should stop them attacking with that, at least. I don't like these fetch to thins that people seem to be doing in their blue decks with Brainstorms. I don't think that's worth doing at all. Unless they've got something very specific that's, do that's happening right now. So this Plague Engineer isn't going to attack. Excellent. An Elvish Visionary. Yeah, I'm down for casting this. It can trips. Might find us something good. It did find us something good. One. So we have one, two, three, four. So we can go and find another endurance. Did we board in the other endurance? I think we bought it in one more, didn't we? Let's check our sideboard. So we've got two in there. Yeah. So we can attack with our endurance and then block with an endurance. And if they block here, then we're in good shape anyway. Let's cast this for... Get ourselves another endurance. I don't think we want these things in our graveyard in our library, so um, we'll put this Bloodstained Mire on the bottom. Like, just in case they've got any delve cards or anything, it makes sense. So, we've got control of the board a little bit here. Thanks to these endurances, we're going to want the other ones and the Grists for the next game. Just a land from our opponent. They're representing potentially high cast force of will here, but they haven't had much going on for a little while. So, we get attacks here. I think we're on the one and one train. One, two. This is three mana. Four, five, six, seven. So we are going to play this in case we draw the Crater Heath next turn. This gives us exactly Crater Heath next turn if we draw it. If I can count that, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, exactly Crater Heath. And if we draw another land, Green Sun Zenith can be Crater Heath as well. So I think we're in a good spot. Okay. One more land, and then we can create a hoof. 
We don't really have anything good to get with this Green Sun Zenith aside from the Crate Hoof now. Or we could get an Atraxa. I guess we could have gotten an Atraxa that turn instead of the Crate Hoof. So Atraxa is seven mana, but four and three in terms of color pips and colorless. Okay, they're playing something. Now we are ahead on board here, so maybe we just attack with both guys. Something big is about to happen. It's a Bedlam Reveler. So this is discard your hand and draw three cards. Okay. This is also a 3-4 with prowess, right? So we aren't attacking into this very easily. Now, if our Green Sun Zenith resolves, then we will be. Do I think our opponent's playing days? We haven't seen days this game. Seven. So this is seven, eight mana. That's not enough, is it? Have I done my maths wrong? No, we needed to draw another land, didn't we? So tap this. Let me play this. Keep this one. Tap this. Six, seven, eight, nine. And if this resolves, we win the game. Looks like it's resolving. Kratov, Beermoth. All of our guys are huge and trampoline. All right, so we got a match. Uh, we we sideboarded completely wrong, and we managed to beat through a plague engineer. So that was all right. I think a big reason why we won this game is because. Look at the spells our opponent had here versus the lands. They got pretty heavily flooded, to be honest. So, can't complain. I think I've got a little bit fortunate there. But we took some good lines with having these endurances and stuff. But, yeah. Maybe our opponent was expecting that Plague Engine would be enough on its own. Where it's kind of like a stopgap measure if you don't follow it up. And they just didn't have the, the stuff to follow up that effectively. Alright, let's go to round four. We are one and two. On the play for round four, our hand doesn't fill me with a great amount of joy, but we can draw a lot of cards. I think this is, like, keepable, but not that impressive. We're going to lose to combo decks, but where else? We're going to lose to fast combo decks anyway. Let's go and get ourselves a basic forest and cast this Green Sun Zenith. Get Dried Arbor. So next turn we can deploy an Elvish Visionary. If we draw a Cradle, we can then deploy a second Elvish Visionary and things start snowballing from there. Now, if our opponent just casts Doomsday here... Okay, it looks like Reanimator. Faith is looting. So we do actually have some options to interfere with our opponent's deck here. Okay, no, we're just getting Grizzle Branded straight away. We're not going to be able to interfere with this one. Dark Ritual. I'm surprised they didn't start on the Dark Ritual. I, I guess they need the Red Mana, actually, but they could have got the Red Mana from the... Oh, they might have drawn the Dark Ritual, actually. Yeah. All right, our opponent... Found a way of putting Grizzle Brand into play on turn one. This is better than anything our deck does. So I think we lose the game. Now, this is a lot more easily destructible. Uh, I think we'll concede here and not give them any more information. We're not beating that. So, Endurances come in. Guy's Blessing probably has a little bit of text here. I don't think it's worth doing. One of these thought seizes, we want these Fairy Macabres. These things seem okay. In Having a Grist to blow something up once it's in play is something I like. We're boarding in these Thought Seizes, so I think we're probably boarding out these. We always want the Caracas as well. Um, can, we can we afford to board out a Besagey? Is the question. I think we can probably board out one Besagey. So now we're looking for six cuts, which is a lot. Um, if they're going the Show and Tell line, Attracts is good, but we don't want our opponent to just Thought Seize up and put an Attractor in the bin. So not really a fan of that. So I think this goes, Collector Roof goes. Um, we're trimming on Heritage, Elvish Visionary. I don't think playing that sort of fairer game. We kind of just need to get our stuff going and hate on what they're doing. Maybe we're supposed to keep the Once Upon a Times in because they hit our, si our si some of our sideboard cards, actually. Do we need things like Natural Order in this matchup? Maybe it just comes down to, like, our fair stuff is enough here. That doesn't seem right to me. But maybe have a crate here to find. I guess we've got these Allosaurus Shepherds. Although the Natural Order wins the game quicker than Allosaurus Shepherd. But these are Elves, so they allow us to play the board out a little bit. A little bit of a tricky one. Maybe we'll just get some of these out. Sure, we've, we've changed some stuff in the deck for sure here. Um, 
it's more a case of can we stop our opponents doing. We want two pieces of Graveyard Hate on turn one. We have two pieces. We have spells that we can cast. This seems fine. We are mono dinosaur herders in this hand. But we can pitch cast the Endurance and we have a Fairy Macabre as well. We lose to Show and Tell. There's an Archon of Cruelty and a Grizzlebrand. So we can nab both of these if they go to reanimate them. There's Dark Ritual. There's a Thought Seize. Let's get rid of Grizzlebrand and there's Archon of Cruelty, please. Right, they're taking our little guy. Seems fine. This is not a very fast clock, so that's something at least. So now we are on play out this Allosaurus Shepherd, play out this with the intention of getting a Dryad Arbor. And then if we can draw a Cradle, we're pretty close to pumping our big guys. Right, our opponent was all in on double petal, maybe. Now they can attack us, but then they get attacked for two, so it's kind of not really worth it, I don't think, for them. They're behind on the race already because of the Thoughtseize damage. So I think they just need to hold the fort with endurance and then sort of build up to do another broken thing. Heritage Druid. Oh, we forgot to get the Dried Arbor there, didn't we? Um, so, play this Heritage Druid. It's going to tap for three. Uh, we'll play out this. I don't think we're attacking here. We just play Shepherd and then pass. So we can go get our dried up because it's the one thing we didn't really want to draw here. And this time I'm going to remember to do it. Let's grab this. Let's go and get the other dried up. So, Cradle is a very good draw for us here. Oh, which Visionary is fine. I think we go for this. Because if we draw a Cradle here, we want to keep as many L's back as we can. So, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, we can't actually, one, two, three, we can't attack this turn, but we can attack next turn. We don't have another Arbor to fetch, so we're probably just going to go and get a Bayou here. There is a marginal thinning thing. It's not really a thing at the end of the day, but it's kind of free for us to do it there. All right, so one, two, three, four, five, six. So we can go to attacks. With a couple of guys. And then make our guys 5-5. Five so we take out their endurance. And we bash them for 5. And we have them dead next turn. Again, if we can draw a cradle. We can get them dead. Through a grizzle brand. I would, I reckon they get 7. But they take more. Are they just not having any lands there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we attack with these guys. And do this sort of stuff. This puts our opponent to one. So fetch lands are off if they do find a land. Very good. They shared themselves the door with the March Flats. Do I want to sideboard any differently from how I've done here? I don't think so. Guy's Blessing has text. It is a piece of graveyard hate. But uh, it is two mana, which is quite expensive. Maybe it's worth playing just to have like one more thing we can do. But I'm not wholeheartedly convinced on it. Hmm. Maybe we're supposed to just have every piece of graveyard hate available. Maybe we do bring this in and trim maybe like a shepherd or a glimpse. Maybe it's a glimpse that goes. That makes a bit more sense to me. Sure, we'll submit like this. So our plan, we could have brought in a Reclamation Sage, actually, because that can blow up an, inch, um, an Animate Dead. All right, so we have double Thoughtseize, and we have a piece of Graveyard Hate. We can keep this. So if they Thoughtseize in, and then don't have a follow-up on the same turn, then we're okay-ish. Okay, so we might have to pitch our Reclaimer here, depending on what goes in their Graveyard. Nothing. Understood. So we're just going to be playing a very fair game here of just thought season and endurance. But I feel this is an okay start to the game for us. Dark Ritual, Entomb, Grief. So they can cast a Grief. We don't care if they Entomb. So I think we take the Grief here. Just 
remove any sorts of threats. So there's the dark ritual. Faith is looting. Sure. They've got a grizzle brand in their graveyard. Understood. And we've got an entomb in hand. And it's pretty tough to be new about, I think. A glimpse of nature. That's not really what we're doing right now, is it? So, Dried Arbor is a green card, in case you're unaware. So we're going to play this out. We're going to Thoughtseize our opponent again. Take out anything that reanimates. Okay, we'll take out one of these. So next time we can go and get a Paducah Bog. Or we can just cast an Endurance, potentially. But yes, this is a green card. Uh, so we can pitch it to Endurance. Which is really key. A Wirewood Symbiote. Hmm, interesting. I'm just going to try and get into our deck a little bit here. Play Symbiote. A Visionary. Okay. It's kind of where our getting into our deck ends there. I think we want to keep two of these available, so we're just going to attack. Because they've got a creature in the graveyard right now, and they have an Entomb, so... They shouldn't be Entombing now anyway. They should be waiting until we wipe their graveyard before they Entomb. We can beat a Thoughtseize here. They took the Visionary. Interesting. We drew another Visionary. Alright, let's cast this Visionary. We're going to have perfect information, but that's fine. Once upon a time. Not a real fan of that one. Technical creatures. Bash. So if we can get our opponent below the ability to activate a um, Grizzle Brand activation, then that's going to be a nice place for us to be. We have two ways of removing our opponent's graveyard. What do they discard here? Dark Ritual and a Grizzle Brand. Okay. We have Thought Seize. Does that change what we want to do here? I think we are just attacking. I would like to see what's going on in our opponent's hand. Alright, let's take this Grief and leave them in the Tomb. We should have got one more point of damage in then. Faithless Looting. Sure. Scrubland. I haven't seen an Underground Sea yet, so I don't know if their deck is going to have any... Okay, Birchville Rangers is actually a good draw for us here. So we can cast this now. We can go to attacks. Here and here. Uh, then end of turn we can cast a Once Upon a Time off of these two elves here. I don't, know, I don't like how I've played this one in a little bit. I think we've done okay, but I think we could have gone and got a Paducah Bog off of here or worked towards casting an, an Endurance. I think if we maybe cast Endurance, that's just better that turn. I think we had a lot of options to put more damage in play. A Reanimate targeting an Elvish Visionary. That is fine. Two life for them to cantrip. Let's cast this. So we'll tap these two and this. Let's have a look. Um, I like Cradle here. I'll take Cradle. A Windswept Heath. That does make this guy into a 3-4, which isn't unimportant. But I think the best thing we can do here is play Cradle. Tap Cradle. Um, add some mana like this. We would like to untap this elf and return this elf. We'll play this. Draw a card. Another Cradle. And we will cast this. Exile our opponent's graveyard. So we've got one, one, two, three. Yeah, and then we can attack with our Elvish Reclaimer here. And we are holding up the Endurance, Hardcast Endurance here. So, we lose to show and tell. Maybe we could have played this game slightly more aggressively. Yeah, I, I don't like the way I played this one. I think we should have been jamming an endurance much earlier. But I liked keeping up the double pitch cast endurance, but as soon as we got in a spot where we could either go and get a Paducah Bog, or we could go and hard cast an endurance, I think we should have just done that immediately. We're not casting this because we would like to keep it in case our opponent does some sort of entomb line. So, I think we will tap this for some mana. Green. Then we will untap this by bouncing this. And we will replay this. And we'll play out this symbiote. And we will activate this. 
We will make a green mana again. We will untap this by bouncing this. We'll cast this. Wait, hold on. Uh, we haven't played a land yet this turn. There's one, two, three, four. No, we can just win the game this turn, right? We play this. Draw another card. Uh, play our land for the turn. Keep this one. Make a load of mana. We did keep the one crate heave in, I believe. Let me just check my sideboard. We did keep the crate heave in. Good. Eight. Go and get the big boy. Make all of our other guys big boys. And we win the match. Yeah, I think... I think we played that one differently. Like, if we'd have scrubbed our opponent's um, graveyard earlier with a Paducah Bog, we would have had a slightly bigger average reclaimer anyway, so our clock would have been better as well instead of deploying other things. I was kind of trying to draw off to, like, combo off a little bit, but that's not really what this matchup is about, and I think I've misplayed this one a bit. But we, st we still got there, but I think we did misplay this one a bit. All right, let's go to the final one. We are 2-2. Two and two. Let's see if we can get a 3-2. What does our hand do? Not a lot. Not a lot. I think we're going to mulligan this one. What does this hand do? We have why would Symbia into, like... Paducah Bog into turn three Endurance or Elvish Visionary. I think this is fine. Let me just get rid of the Oof. Uh, we are kind of like a critical mass deck, so we can't mulligan too low. Let's see what our opponent's up to. Cracking a Misty Rainforest for a Watery Grave. This says Death Shadow. Street Wraith being cycled with some weird art I've never seen before. Let's have a look at this. Pretty cool. Sure. Our opponent... Is almost ready to cast a Death Shadow. Let's cast this without paying its mana cost. I think playing out the guy that makes our spells uncounterable versus the Day's counter spell deck seems like a pretty good place to be. And we'll take this Allosaurus Shepherd. So this will go, hopefully, not get stifled. No, it didn't get stifled. You didn't really see stifled in these decks very often from the old um, Death Shadow. Now they could just kill this, but again, that's. Not great, but it's fine. Okay, snuff out. Sure. So our opponent has a pretty good Death Shadow now. So it can be a seven power guy. That's pretty nice. They could cast a Merc Tide, but it will be a quite a small Merc Tide that we can. Yeah, this is fine. Like, it's not great for us, but it's not the end of the world. So. Then we cast this and we play this one out because we need to get this land out of the way. They don't have any like reach either. They're not a red deck and stuff. So, okay, we're going to lose our green sun zenith here, which is a bit annoying. But they don't have a lot of reach in their deck because they're blue black. They can't play things like lightning bolt and stuff. So you can have a pretty good idea what the clock's going to be. And this one is not the fastest. It's five turn clock. So a snuff out. All right, our opponent's just killing all of our things. They're probably going to have Plague Engineers out the board. Once upon a time. Uh, let's play this land out first. And cast this. This way we can play around the days. Cradle, Birchall, Rangers, Elvish, Visionary. I guess we take out the take the Visionary here. Um, and then we pass. Our plan is to Visionary and why would Symbiote draw a few cards and... Maybe put a natural order into our opponent's face and win the game that way. If we can get a track, so that should be good. They can't snuff it out. They can't feel push it. Bail full Strix. That will trade within a track, sir. But I'll gain seven life. And I obviously don't have to trade with this. We do not want to draw a Dryad Arbor. So we're going to fetch a Dryad Arbor in a second. Arbor said you can kill the opposing Bail for Strix as well if we need to. Okay, Green Sun Zenith. I think step one is Elvish Visionary. This does change the clock, actually, having this. Okay, this is pretty good for us. So we're going to try and bait something out here with this Green Sun. We'll go and get an Allosaurus Shepherd. So next turn we can cast a Natural Order for a Traxxer, and that can stem the tide of the Merc Tide. Stem the tide, see what I did there. All right. So we take another four. We take well, we take five here probably. Plus this, and we'll sacrifice our dried arbor. We can just go and get a crate even win the game here. Though. All right, they conceded. So, all right, 
yeah, we, we just get a crate there because they're on two, right? Sure. So, we managed to get that one. Pretty happy about that. So, we're going to need endurances. We, where'd they go? From over this side. We need endurances. We're going to need this grist. Snuff out hits Merc Tide, but it doesn't hit Death Shadow or Gamagang if they're playing them. I think just having the grist is the best thing for that and trying to use our uh, graveyard wipe here is a way of getting rid of it. Natural order, not great against Death Shadow, but, well, against Captain Spells in general, but, and here's the quite big but, we have Allosaurus Shepherds to try and resolve this. Do we want these Once Upon a Times? We could be looking at like Once Upon a Time and a Glimpse and just have lots of beefy men so that we just exhaust their removal. I do like having Natural Order as a thing we can do. All right. Well, our spells can be uncountable here. And we can keep these. We can lead off with the Shepherd because we've got a spare one. Not a big fan of what Wasteland can do to us in this game, though. Thought Seize here is pretty good. I imagine we lose the Symbiote. Could be the Endurance, though. Okay, they just want to try and get through those. Interesting. Right, we're going to go and get a Forest. Play around Wasteland. We're going to play a Symbiote. If they kill this, we do have another one. I would like to draw another way of getting a basic Forest, though. That's certainly a thing I would like. Ponder from our opponent. So unlike the sort of Delver decks, the Shadow deck tends to disrupt and then play a threat, whereas Delver decks tend to play a threat whilst disrupting you with permission and like removal spells on your guys and wastelands and stuff. Another thought sees. Sure. So this time we might lose the Endurance. Nope, just the Allosaurus. So our opponent's got a handful of counter spells is what they're telling me. An Elvish Reclaimer. All right, I'm going to play an Elvish Reclaimer. There's a daze. We will not pay. And I'll do this. And I will play an Elvish Reclaimer. Another daze. Another daze. I feel we could have played that one better if we played the Cradle out first, to be honest. Because we didn't have to tap it immediately. We could have just played it out. So our opponent can't cast Merc Tide yet. Which is nice. But they can get their life total quite low for a Shadow. There's a Shadow. Sure. A natural order. We might be in a situation where we want to do things in the natural order soon. So next turn we can cast Endurance, but they can make a Merc Tide this turn. One, two, three, four, five, six. It was going to be quite a big Merc Tide, but I don't think we want to get rid of our natural order. Okay, a Ponder. This is good for us. Which means no natural, uh, no Merc Tide. No Wasteland. We have to imagine our opponent has a Count Spell here. A Dryad Arbor. We'll play a Dryad Arbor. I think we will just play this Endurance in our opponent's upkeep. So this stops Merc Tides. It can check a Death Shadow as well. It might not do. It might just fail at that task, but it's a thing we can try. Okay, so Death Shadow is getting bigger. I think we can put a Wildwood Symbiote under the bus here. A Plague Engineer. Alrighty then. We're probably losing... Our symbiotes? Yeah, sure. I think we take the damage here and we cast uh, this natural order, right? One, two, three, four. We can cast natural order, but not through a daze. If we draw a land, we can cast through a daze. We can't beat force of will. Elvish Visionary. We can play this and then block the Death Shadow with it. That way we don't play into daze. That seems okay to me. I've tapped this the wrong way around, haven't I? Should have tapped these things for it. Okay, so now we can just play match order around a daze here, right? We'll keep this one. We'll try it. Three, that's four mana. And we'll sacrifice this Elvish Visionary. Uh, so if we get creative here, I think that's lethal. Because these are all going to be big enough to trample over. If they have a snuff out, they go to three. So we finished the league with a 3-2 positive record. Not bad. Let's have a little chat about the deck. So, I touched upon this earlier in the games. Playing this build, even though it's quite similar to the ones I would normally play, it's also quite different, right? So, the builds I'm used to playing have a lot more one-drops. 
because we've got, well, not necessarily always more, but we have the Nettle Sentinels and we also have Queer on Ranger. So we have a little bit more one drops and the Queer on Ranger helps you cheat on mana a little bit. And the Nettle Sentinels give you the ability to go off with Heritage Druid, which is usually a four of in those lists. So you have just more ability to just make lots of mana quickly. This build doesn't make lots of mana as quickly. So what we're, we're trading off that ability for reliably finding a cradle instead, as well as having a little toolbox of lands, including a Paducah Bog and a Caracas in the sideboard. That's kind of the trade-off. And I don't know if I have enough knowledge to know which is better, because I'm not really an Elves player, but I know which I personally prefer playing. I like the, you know, turn two, maybe kill people thing. It's kind of more my jam, whereas this has more of a mid-game way of playing the game where you have your endurance and your collector. So you've got a few more bullets in the game. You're trying to play a slightly slower game instead of going off, but you can still go off pretty early into natural order if you want to. So the options are there. Uh, what I will say is I, last time I played elves, I had more forests in my deck and I really liked having more basic forests. And there was a time where we got part to exile and if we'd have had a forest, we would have been able to natural order the turn after. So that's definitely something I would think about is having a third forest in the mana base somewhere. I don't think that's a particularly unreasonable request. And Collector Roof and Endurance. These are things that you could have them in the sideboard, but then what would you have instead sort of thing. So these are kind of like you're being pre-boarded a little bit and hopefully they don't come up. And because we're a bit slow, we're not just trying to nettle sentinel people out and just get loads and loads of mana and go off and draw loads of cards. Um, so this isn't necessarily ideal. I didn't really like Glimpse of Nature that much in this deck. It didn't feel like we just had a really dense amount of one drops. I think we're also playing more lands than the regular elf builds I would play would normally have because they have more one drops instead of trying to go up the curve quite as much. Also those other builds I would have different natural order targets. So because those decks want to go a little bit faster I would normally have Torsten and Apex Altasaur as options for natural order alongside Craterhoof Behemoth instead of Atraxa. I think Torsten for the like more combo we builds is better because it's just got more creatures, right? You're not trying to sort of do some of these other things. You're not really playing once upon a time. You're just trying to play a load of guys and then use them for mana. So I don't think Atraxa is good in those builds. I think Torsten is very good. When I cast Torsten, it was on average drawing me five cards. And then also, if it dies, you get a bunch of guys. It just felt pretty strong to me. And it's much easier to cast if you need to hard cast it, because you just need one virtual Rangers, and then you can get the white pip to cast it. So that's another thing I think is is worth thinking about. And also did like the Apex Out of the way of just nuking your opponent's board and just having a massive yacht. Uh, obviously, a Traxxer in this build makes more sense to me. Now I've played it, because it's a slower build. We're not trying to just go off and get a big density of stuff going on. We're just trying to, um, you know, play a slightly fairer game, I would say, than regular elves. We're not trying to just chain loads and loads of mana. Now, we can chain a fair bit of mana, like you saw in some of my turns where I was doing Birch Law Ranger, bounce the... All right, tap two things, bounce the visionary, then untap the ranger, replay the visionary, that sort of thing. We had that going in our deck, and we can... Green Sun Center for those pieces... But our deck isn't naturally designed to just do that as often and as reliably. What it does mean um, is that this deck, I think, is possibly slightly more difficult to play. I think you have to evaluate your opening hands differently. And in the first couple of rounds, I don't think I was evaluating my hands quite right. I was thinking, oh, okay, we can just sort of pull out of this. My deck is going to be a lot of creatures. But then we had a lot of stuff that we just, you know, wasn't really getting there with in the right way. So I think that's important. We didn't have two two elves in Nettle Sentinels to find. Those can actually end up doing a reasonable chunk of damage and getting your opponent low if you drop them early enough. Which is something I like, as well as having things that don't die to Plague Engineer that are elves. So that's, you know, there's there's definitely reasons to play this deck and reasons to play the other deck. And the person who plays this, Aaron Relentless, is quite well known for playing elves. And they're clearly significantly better at playing elves than I am. So you should definitely listen to what they're playing. So, sideboard wise, because we've got this endurance in the main, going having four endurances mean that the sort of matchups where your opponent is kind of trying to trade stuff with you and then 
land a Merktide or whatever, or, you know, Dragon's Rage Channel Index. It means we've got a lot of game versus those, which is really nice. And it also means that against the Plague Engineer decks, we have some things to bring in that dodge Plague Engineer. It does mean that we kind of change a fair bit against those decks. Like we're still keeping our stuff, but we're, we're boarding out some number of RLs for things like Grist and more endurances, just so we can have some things that can tussle. But I will say that if your deck if your opponent's deck is a Plague Engineer deck that also has counter spells, then it becomes a bit awkward because obviously Allosaurus Shepherd is a reasonable cut for those sorts of black-green matchups. But if they've got blue sources in their deck as well, there's not that many that blue decks that are playing Plague Engineer right now, but there's some Leovold decks that are, for example. But that becomes slightly more strenuous on what you're sideboarding out, I think. But yeah, I, you know, I quite like this deck. I play Elves every now and then on the channel. I really do like Elves. For me, the better fit is the combo wells, but that's just me. All right, so I think we're more or less done with the league. I hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. These things cost you nothing and help you out, help me out even. And if you really want to help me out, you can become a member of the channel. We've got levels ranging from two pound a month, four pound a month, and like twenty-three pound a month, I think it is. And the high tier lets you submit a deck to me once a month that I play, so you can choose what I play. So if that's something that interests you, why not? And if you just want to sort of say thanks for making content, you can also make one-off payments using the YouTube super thanks button, I think. So yeah, you can do these things, but just watching my stuff helps too, really. And if you know anyone who's interested, why not send my content their way? All right, I've spoken enough at the end of this one. So thank you very much for watching and goodbye.